Well, hello there. Here's a bit of an update to the Skyhook. If you remember, this is the big 2.6 meter glider um, I got given last month to review. And the bits that I need to install and fly are here. But what I didn't really have uh, an idea on is if I was going to use an autopilot or do something else. There's a general issue here is that this sort of glider needs crow braking, which is uh, flaps down, ailerons up, in order to slow it down. Uh, because these things come in quickly and you want to be able to actually land and not just float away miles down the field. So not many autopilots allow individual aileron control. I know the Vector does and a few others does but they're big money ones. So I'd initially gone down the route of I'll just do manual mixing in my Tyrannus and it will be fine. But I also then thought mm, if this thing gets away and we lose signal it could just disappear off to Maine and Europe. This is something that will thermal and soar away and, and go very fast. So I decided to play with iNav. It seems to be real flavour of the month at the moment. Everybody seems to be messing with it um, and obviously getting good results so worth a try I thought. But um, it still seemed like slightly complicated to set up for this sort of plane so I thought I'd try and simulate it because what I can't do easily because 2.6 metres is bigger than this space is uh, is put the plane down, put all the stuff in and test it. So I built myself a model of my model. This is the cardboard V-tail. It is my test bed for checking out iNav, um, which I've now done. Come down to the floor and I'll show you how the surfaces work. Okay, so just to explain what we've got here, we've got uh, an omnibus F3 board running iNav. We've got a sort of temporary ESC here which is supplying uh, 5 volts forward back to the receiver. All the servos are then plugged into the receiver via their 5 volts and grounds but just the signal cables um, are going into here. So we've got SBUS going into the UART1 here and the four servos for ailerons and VTAIL at the back going to here with the flaps going directly into the receiver. We've also got the power uh, from the battery going directly into the VBAT pin on the omnibus board. Uh, lots of lots of weird things with this board that I didn't know about. Normally we'd put SBUS in these three pins which is apparently UART3 but if you do that it disables PWM5 and 6 so I'd only have two channels because aside from that being SBUS, uh, channel, well, PWM1 and 2, which in INAV terms is 0 and 1, is reserved for motors. Uh, 2 and 3 have the ailerons servos and then I'd be stuffed using any of this. Uh, so the reason I've moved to UART1 is that gets me access to uh, PWM5 and 6 for the tail, but 7 and 8 uh, are also reserved for uh, IC2 or something, so I can't use those either. So only four usable channels on these ones, which is why I've got the uh, flaps on something else. But anyway, let's turn around this way so we can actually see what's happening. In pass-through mode, as it is, we've got normal aileron movement, we've got elevator movement, and rudder. What I've got, <laughs> I've got servos stuck on with a bit of tape, I've got uh, control horns made out of uh, cardboard, push rods made out of paper clips, uh, mostly tape and, and hot glue. So the idea is it not super accurate, just to give me an idea of will it work or not in terms of the mixing. Because this uh, is a custom mix, although it's documented happily on the website for the um, mini talon, as VTALs are. So what I've done, I've made sure my stabilisation works, which I should hopefully be able to show you. You should see the other one going up. And the tail goes up and down. So in order to handle the flap situation, what I've got is um, a mix for camber this puts flaps on about 40 or 50 percent. The idea is for takeoff, which has nothing to do with a flight controller. But then I added a flapper on mode, which is this, 
and that's basically crow breaking. So if you see there the oops the flaps will come down and the ailerons will go up and obviously I've still got control and I can also add a self level mode so we still get reaction in the ailerons even when that happens. It's not particularly pretty but it seems to serve its purpose as a test bed so I'm good. So INAV for me is working pretty well I'm sure there's lots of tuning to do and stuff but the basis is there so hopefully I can I can build on that I'm not sure how it will fly but we'll find that bit out so it's a good time to mention that I decided to create a blog why have I created a blog well I've already got this YouTube channel right here uh, which I like doing it's because sometimes there's so many little bits and pieces I want to talk about little intricacies of what I've done but the videos that I do are generally quite long anyway and if I start yapping on and on and on even more they'd get even longer. So, you know, I don't think my videos are going to get shorter, but I've at least got a way of doing a kind of companion piece to the video for people that like to tell me more. Go look at the blog. There's also a couple of things I'm putting on there that I probably wouldn't do videos on, like I'm just documenting uh, a quad build at the moment, uh, which I'll probably talk about in a video once I get it flying and stuff to see how it goes, but I thought I'd sort of do a as we build it kind of thing. But anyway, check it out if you want to. Uh, you know the address. Meantime, I'll be back when the when this turns into a rather lovely glider and we get to try and fly it. Fun stuff. See you next time. Bye.